why, and they have different reasons, doesn't Boston Lloyd or Coach Trevor want to compete in a bodybuilding competition again? I'll let uh, Boston go first. Um, well, my main reasoning is, I mean, if I had to for marketing or whatever later down the road, I would have to be, my, my physique would have to be really advanced. I would do it, but I really have no passion for it. Like the whole putting on the trunk, shaving. I like the process of the prep and getting down there and knowing that you're going to step on stage with people and you're, you have to be at your best. But for me, and I don't even like to play the political card because yeah, there is some politics involved, but it's nothing as much as people think in my opinion. Um, but saying that I just don't, it's just no, not, there's no, like no passion for me. It's a waste of money for me, honestly. And it's kind of dangerous for me because I go crazy. All right, Trevor, why do you not want to compete anymore? And I'll, I'll preface that by saying Trevor and I were talking on the way over um, about how I get anxiety when I think of practicing law again, because I could, right? I'm going to keep my license intact, but I really like my lifestyle retired better than when I was practicing law. Uh, so then Trevor said that the thought of getting back on a bodybuilding stage gives him the same anxiety. Why, Trevor? Well, originally I stopped. I was kind of taken out of it with the health problems. And it was probably like the hardest thing to come to terms with. And then once I came to terms with it, now it's the exact opposite. Now it's like, I want nothing to do with it. And I remember anytime I put on weight, when I start training with them or eating, I remember how you know disgusting I feel, how bad it is to be bloated and eat forcing food down all the time and doing injections. And so that just gives me anxiety of being back on that routine and that schedule where you have to be selfish and you come first. And, you know, every morning has to be this way. You can't go see family without bringing your food. You have to deal with the questions. And now I'm at the point, you know, that gives me horrible anxiety thinking about it. And I'm just so far removed from it. Even the passion for me is gone. But I get to live vicariously through clients now. So I get to see them succeed. And that, for me, is a lot better, helping someone else to win. You know, I know for 100%, 100% fact they would never do good on Olympia stage. I would get destroyed if I could ever have made it. So what would I do it for? You know, they're, you do it for nothing. You make no money. So why See, do you I look, I look at exactly like you. Like, if I can't be the best at something or not even make any kind of... I, I, first of all, I'll never make the Olympia stage anyways or, you know, whatever. Becoming a pro now is the easiest shit. It seems yeah. like I feel like if we tried, it, would, it it wouldn't be that hard. That's not hard. Master, especially masters. There's like top two in each class. <laughs> I mean, we could eventually do it, but it's it's from there, <laughs> if, from there, and then they're getting like bantam weights, like 135 pound guys, two pro yeah. cars and national. It's a fucking joke. So, but I mean, to ever make money and be good, like be a good pro, I think it, that that comes down to genetics. I just don't have it. You have to do it outside the sport. You can't yeah. make it just through com competitions, yeah. like unless you you're Phil Heather, yeah. You know, the 90s, Weeder paid you $100,000 almost just a year for a contract. And then you're doing $50,000 photo shoots monthly. You know, nowadays, you can see all that stuff online. It's not the same. For me, I'll compete because I like getting on stage <laughs> in a little bikini and having people clap for me and take pictures. And you love drugs. Because that's how I get down. <laughs> Be swole and swole, my friends of Freedom Pioneers of Human Evolution. 